Hi guys, it's Colin from BashBackPain.com here. Another stretch for you today. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was showing a stretch for retrolithesis, and it's, this is the condition whereby one of your vertebrae has shifted forwards or backwards. Um, we were specifically looking at where the vertebrae had shifted backward. It's like what we call retrolithesis, where it's actually come sort of going backwards and away from your uh, belly button, if that makes sense. Uh, it can cause a lot of pain, it can have issues with disc herniations, etc. Uh, well, there is another type, which is called the anterior lysis, where the, the vertebra actually shifts forwards, it actually moves, displaces forward. That can also cause a lot of issues with uh, back pain, uh, potentially uh, setting you up for disc herniations, disc bulges, etc. So there is a little simple stretch you can do to help correct that condition. So if you do have this anterior slippage of one of the vertebrae going forward, it normally happens in the lumbar region, but it can happen in the neck. This little stretch should help you, all right? So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I'm going to teach you through the floor position first, and then I'm going to move on to the wall, okay? So a couple of things. I'm going to show you in the floor first, but the stretch will be happening on the wall, just so you understand. So we're going to be on the wall, but I'm just showing position for the legs, hands, etc. on the floor first. When we go on the wall, we're going to have our butt touch on the wall. We're going to have our toes up towards our knees. They're not going to be down here. They're going to be up towards our knees. The mechanism of action, the actual stretch itself, we're going to actually activate our hamstrings, muscles behind your leg, and you're going to dig your heel into the ground, into the wall, as if you're pulling your heels towards your bum. So if you're pulling that way towards your butt, yeah? But we're going to dig them into the wall so these muscles get activated. When that's going on, you keep your toes towards your knees. We get the lower back flat on the wall. We take our hands. Now, I take my thumbs here. They're facing each other. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to rotate them out, right? So they're the opposite, facing away from each other. Then I'm going to bring them down behind my head. And I'm going to push away. So I'm going to be driving my hands away, pushing my hands away, pushing my hands away. At the same time, I'm going to keep my lower back squashed on the floor. I'm going to dig my heels in and pull them. Imagine they're getting pulled towards my bum. They're actually digging into the floor. Okay, they don't actually move. Now, this is the setup I'm showing you on the floor. We're going to move to the wall in just a second, okay? But again, hand position. Thumbs face you. You're going to rotate them out so the thumbs face opposite. Then bring the hands down behind my head, close to my ears and you're going to project the arms and shoulders away. Now, I'm going to explain intensity, power, um, seconds you hold this for in just a second, okay? But now, we're going to move on to the wall. See you in a second. Okay, guys, so now we're going to do the actual stretch for real. I'm going to talk you through it once again on the wall. Remember, on the floor, we're just setting you up, letting you see the positions, the legs, arms, etc. have to be in. Now we're going to do a stretch for real on the wall. Now, you're going to try to get in close enough that your buttocks, okay, touch the wall. Now, if you've got tight hamstrings, you've got some sciatica pain issues, you've got some other lower back problems, okay, check out my course, all right? But if you can't get in far enough because of that pain, it's okay. You go in as far as you can where you don't have pain. Remember, these stretches, these are all to your maximum, right? It's all to the individual's uh, maximum they can go to. So, we're gonna get in against the wall, we're gonna get in tight, and we're gonna swing around like so. Okay, we'll talk through each step again. So, here I am, got my buttocks a little bit closer. So they're touching. Yep, that's me on the wall. Okay, I can feel them touching here. As I said, if you're very tight and hamstrings got restricted in your hips, you just wiggle off, okay, till you, you, there's no pain with your sciatica or your hamstrings are pull, not pulling too tight. You feel your lower backs on the floor, that's where you want to be, all right? Always to your maximum. So I'm gonna go into my position here. Okay, like there. So we'll talk it through first, then we'll do the stretch. Toes towards knees, step number one. We've got about a 90 degree, 90 degree angle, a right angle at the knee here. Lower back is pulled on the floor, okay? A good way to cue this, to get big deep breath, big belly breath in, and then when you breathe out, Imagine your belly button is going all the way through your spine. Okay, that'll help flatten your lower back on the floor. So, we're in position, but we're not stretching yet, okay? Now we take the arms. Remember I said thumbs together, and then rotate, you're basically externally rotating your arms out, so the thumbs are opposite. They're going to go back here, okay, behind our ears, 
And when we stretch for real, they're going to be pushing. Your arms are going to be pushing away from the body. We're going to start with 50% power. So you're not trying to tear your arms away from your body. You're going to be gently pushing. So there's tension. You have to have this constant tension to effect the stretch. Okay, we're trying to essentially help pull that vertebra backwards. Okay, from the front to the back. All right. So let's go through it. Toes towards the knees. I want you to dig your heels into the wall. And when you do that, you should feel activation of your hamstrings behind your thigh, here the hamstring muscles. So you're trying to push those heels into the wall, okay? Activate, feel the hamstrings come on, they, they, they're, they're, they're active, okay? Keep that, maintain. Maintain toward, toes towards knees. Maintain flat lower back, keep all that in position. Bring the arms around, as we said before. Now, start to push the arms away, 50% power. Breathe naturally, still keep digging my heels into the floor, keep my toes back, keep my lower back on the floor. Digging the heels into the floor, digging the heels, sorry, digging the heels into the wall, into the wall, keep the hamstrings activated, push the arms away. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, keep your chin tucked in. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and relax slowly. Good, relax everything. Make sure you do these stretches, keep your chin tucked in, okay? You don't want to be having your chin projected out like this. Chin tucked in, a nice little double chin. You want to relax the face. So we did about 10, 15 seconds at 50% power, okay? <clears throat> That's what I want you to work with. Start one time a day, 15 seconds, 50% of your power. Gradually work up, adding five seconds on every day till you get to one minute, okay? It'll only take you five, six days, whatever till you get there, okay? Then I want you to slowly start to increase the power. So the reason we start the stretch out very easily and we progress very gently is because like any exercise, something brand new you've never done before, if you were to jump in, you know, 100% power ah, for one minute, you know, really ah, going at it, your shoulder's going to be sore, you'll be getting cramp, okay? Your muscles aren't used to this type of activity. Because this type of stretch, it requires tension in two directions. You're pulling, essentially, to help pull the vertebra back, right? So it takes a lot of effort to stretch that tissue. You know, that's a lot of tension in your muscles, etc. It can cause pain if you're not used to it. So we start very slowly, carefully, 50% power. Then you're going to work up, okay? So 15 seconds, add on five every day. If you're feeling fine, add on 10 every day, right? Till you get to that minute. Then 50% power, go up to 75% power, okay? Then up to 100% power. It should take you a couple of weeks to get from where we are doing it from day one up to 100% power for one minute. I would do it two, three times a day, okay? Um, don't do it first thing in the morning when you first wake up. There's various reasons for that, okay? I'll just tell you, look, at least wait two or three hours before you do the, that stretch the first time. After that, you can do it two or three times a day. One minute each time is fine. If you want to do it for more than that, yes, you can. But I must, as I said, tell you again, if you're doing, you know, five one-minute stretches in a row and you've, you've not warmed up, you've not, like, taken your time to progress that level, you're going to be sore, okay? So just take your time, all right? So one more time, okay? Let's do it from the top. We're in this position. My bum is touching the floor, okay? 90-degree angle at the knees. Pull my toes towards my knees. Push my heels into the wall. Activate my hamstrings. I maintain that. I keep that on. Keep my toes towards my knees. Keep that on. Keep my lower back on the floor. Take my hands. Thumbs face, externally rotate, thumbs are opposite, tuck my chin in, okay, chin down, and then I push the arms away, push the arms away, push the arms away, keep the heels digged into the floor, constant tension, 12, 11, 10, lower back pushing the floor, 9, 8, 7, breathe easily, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and relax slowly, good. Now, as I said, guys, that stretch is for anterior lathesis, where the vertebra has slipped forward, okay? And we're helping pull it back in, all right? So listen, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it. Any comments, questions, hit them up down below. If you think somebody else would benefit from this video, please share it as well. Guys, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.